Is cheap scuba dive gear worth buying? Is a cheap double ender from China as good as an expensive one? My name is Ben and this video is a follow up to my first cheap versus expensive comparison. On this channel I'm gonna do a lot of scuba dive tips and scuba gear reviews just like this. If you like this kind of content consider subscribing. Since the weather is really nice today Grab yourself an ice cold beverage of your choice and dive in. I really like this stuff. It's really refreshing and the best thing is it's alcohol free. If you have access to German beer, um, you should really try it. I think most of uh, the viewers from Germany, they already know that stuff. Ice cold during isolation because of the Corona crisis, it's perfect. I used the time during the crisis and the home isolation to make some videos and maybe you remember one of my first videos was the double ender comparison where I compared a cheap double ender from China to an expensive expensive one um, that you can get at a local dive store it's not really expensive it's a, around 12 euros compared to the China cracker it's uh, sixfold the price. I get some comments on the double ended review, and the comment was that in the video it was visible that the double ender, the cheap one, so I have the expensive one and the cheap one, and there was a difference between it. I mentioned this in the test. So I said in the test that the expensive one was nicely made here. And the cheap one was cut out a little bit more raw, like this. You can see it here, the spring has a little bit open, so you can maybe see the spring inside. And the comment was, how does these double enders behave in sand? So if you really put them in sand, can sand enter uh, the double ender itself? to the spring and block the mechanism. So the question was, if I put this in sand, does it somehow make a difference? Does one of the double unders block more or earlier than the other does? And I thought, hey, let's test it. Luckily, we don't have to drive very far because we have a sandbox in our garden. Hey guys, how are you doing? You doing well? How's the weather like? Hey, you like it? You like it? Very nice. This is the sandbox. So I have this double enders here and really, really dig them deep into the sand. See, there's really sand inside. So let's see if there's any difference between uh, the double enders after the sand test. They're both 
going a little bit harder. Ah, this is the cheap one. This cheap one got shortly stuck. But now it's back. The expensive one works. But you really feel there's sand inside. The other side, oh, it's almost the same. Well, I think there isn't any uh, any difference between both. So even after putting them in the sand, they're both, they're both working. So what if you really put them in really thick mud? Oh, let's test it. Wow, it's really hard to get. Maybe I should get rid of the excess water. See, that's really dirty. So maybe we let them dry in the sun for a couple of minutes. And now do what we do all the time during these times, wash your hands. In the meantime, it started raining, unfortunately, so I had to go inside. Anyways, the double unders are really muddy now and I really tried to get some mud and sand into the double unders. Let's see how this affected them. The expensive one and the cheap one, they're kind of hard to open. However, after doing it for two or three times, it still works. So there's nothing really special. There's nothing really blocking them and even after putting a lot of mud and sand inside the double ender, it's still working. To be honest, I don't see a real difference. With both the cheap and the expensive one, sand and clay went in. The exposed spring doesn't make any real difference. Both double enders don't block permanently. And to be honest, they never get this dirty in a real situation Anyway, so thank you for your comment as Ty, A-S-T-Y, whatever your YouTube nickname is pronounced. Your comment was absolutely legit. The cheap double ender has in fact the spring a bit more exposed. This can be an issue and it seems to be relevant when it comes to using these double enders in cave environments where they might stay on sand or muddy ground for some time. However, at least with this test, I couldn't confirm this. One short disclaimer, this test, as well as my salt water and hydrogen sulfide test from part one of the video, is no standard procedure in material science. To test salt water resistance of a material, one would use a salt water spray test to allow oxygen to get to the test subject's surface. The mud and sand test I did today is as well no standardized test. However, it's the easiest I can do and the easiest test everyone can repeat at home. Did you do something similar to test your dive gear? If yes, leave a comment. I would really love to read about tests you did on your own gear. If you like to see more of this kind of content or training tips for technical and cave divers, please consider subscribing, hit the bell and never miss a video again. Thanks for watching, take care and see you soon.